So welcome everyone to Agribility's National Training Workshop Virtual Sessions and the Veterans Harvest Workshop. Today, we have a panel presentation on state and regional programs for farmer veterans. And before we begin, I'm just gonna do a little housekeeping. If you could please mute your microphone and rename your screen with your first and last name if you've not already done so. If you need closed captioning, you can click on the closed captions button on your Zoom screen. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat box and we will uh, answer them as time allows. We are obviously recording this session, so um, it will be available at a later date on the National Agribility website. And at the end of the session, I will put a link in the chat box for you to follow to complete an evaluation. So I am gonna stop share and I am gonna turn it over to Cindy Chastain, who is our Veterans Outreach Coordinator. Cindy, it's all yours. Hey, thanks, Tess. You're welcome. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. I'm Cindy Chastain, the Veteran Outreach Coordinator for the National Agribility Project and the moderator for today's session. Hi, Fred. Um, we, are, we have four great programs today to talk about, and so we're going to do them one by one. If you have some questions, type them in the chat box, and I'll try to get them at the end of each of the four presentations. Um, and then we might have a little time at the end to talk about to, to uh, have some more questions. So with that, I will share my screen. Here are the four projects we have today. We have uh, Heroes to Hives, which is uh, going to be presented by Dr. Adam Ingrao, Indiana AgVets Project by Ed Sheldon, Heroes to Hives of Missouri by Joni Harper and Patriot Gardens, um, Melissa Stewart will be presenting. So I'm going to turn it over to Adam, go ahead and I will stop sharing and I will introduce you while you get your presentation up. So Dr. Adam Angreo holds a BS in Agricultural and Environmental Plant Science from California Polytechnic State University and a PhD in entomology from Michigan State University, a fourth generation army veteran and nationally recognized veterans advocate. Dr. Ingrao has led efforts across the nation for the last decade to connect veterans with career and wellness opportunities within the agricultural sector. He is the founder and lead educator for the Heroes to Hives program and has served previously as the veterans liaison for Michigan State University Extension, the director of the Veterans and Agriculture Network and the executive director of the Farmer Veteran Coalition of Michigan. Dr. Ingrao has published numerous scientific articles and most re recently co-authored the book, Honey Bee Medicine for the Veterinary Practitioner. Welcome, Adam, and it's all yours. Thank you, Cindy, so much. And uh, thanks, everybody, for having me here today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the program that we have started started here in the state of Michigan, which is now going nationally and international called Heroes to Hives. So Heroes to Hives really, it started as a program uh, that my wife and I started from my own personal experience of transitioning from the military in 2004 as a service connected disabled vet. Um, when I got out of the military, I was one of those vets that was um, sent home to the VA where I was you know, prescribed a steady diet of opiates uh, for my condition, um, really struggled with a lot of substance abuse and um, what that did to my life. And when I found beekeeping, I pretty much saw a complete transformation in my life and have since then dedicated my life to honeybees and training our men and women of the military uh, to be the next generation of beekeepers. The program started six years ago as a collaboration between Michigan Food and Farming Systems and BeeWise Farms, my personal business, and has since grown to include Michigan State University Extension, where the program is housed, uh, the University of Missouri extension which uh, Johnny will talk about just here in a little bit uh, a little bit that is our first um, state chapter of the program and then we're also collaborating with the University of Minnesota University or, or a University of Nebraska Lincoln and Auburn University um, to start uh, state level programming in those states 
And then we are also piloting a program with the VFW here in Michigan to actually provide Heroes to Hives training and apiaries at VFW posts. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. So our beekeeping training program really is focused on training individuals to be small scale sustainable beekeepers. And we look at beekeeping as a hobby, a career, an opportunity to be part of a larger community like we were in the military and as therapy. Our students go through nine months of intensive training that is essentially a, um, it's kind of a hybridized a training platform. We basically run the main program, which is a, a lot of material, and I'll talk about it here in just a moment, but the main program is primarily run online, um, and that is the nine month program. And then we dovetail that online training with hands-on experiences at workshops at apiaries across uh, across Michigan and now across the Midwest uh, even. And so um, we'll talk about, a little bit about what those uh, workshops look like. The main program itself is uh, housed at Michigan State University Extension and their desire to learn online learning platform. And essentially the way it works is students register for the program, which is entirely free. I should have mentioned that up on top. The program is free to veterans, active duty personnel, and their dependents um, as well. And so um, basically those individuals that enroll for that portion of the program, that is all online, those individuals come from all over the world. We have active duty personnel stationed in Asia and Europe participating in the program, uh, students from all 50 states and all territories except for Samoa. Um, so a lot of folks from all around the country and the world participating in this program. 30 plus lectures um, that are part of the program, about 60 hours of material spread out over nine months, 25 instructional videos we offer through the program. Those are particularly topic specific instructional videos that help individuals manage bees in the apiary. We then also su offer support resources in the way of business, uh, small business development, uh, working with agribility is another big portion of what we do, connecting our students with agri agribility um, counselors around the country to work with them to understand how to better work in an apiary with service connected disabilities. And then individuals that complete the program get a certificate of completion from Michigan State University Extension. In addition, those individuals that complete the program can then transfer all of their credits from our program to the Great Plains Master Beekeeping Program run through University of Nebraska, which is a five-year program that allows our students to continue their education to become a master certified beekeeper. Our educational program essentially fulfills the apprentice level of that program. And so our students transfer their credits and then move on in their education. The hands-on workshops really is where the rubber meets the road. And unfortunately for the last couple of years, this has been very disrupted because of COVID and constantly changing restrictions. Um, so this has been a little tougher this is the last couple of years, but in traditional years where we don't have restrictions, we hold about 20 to 30 on-ground workshops in Michigan. And then our partners also hold workshops in their states as well. And you can see here, MSU has six apiaries spread out across the state of Michigan where we hold workshops. These workshops are three hour workshops where we are in the bee yard the entire time learning something. Uh, University of Minnesota has two apiaries. University of Missouri has one apiary currently and I know is expanding that. University of Nebraska has one apiary where we do training at. Auburn has one apiary. And like I mentioned earlier, we have a VFW post here in Michigan that is also offering this training. Uh, one of my alumni of the program is leading that program and Heroes to Hives has donated hives to that post to allow them to do the on-ground training at a VFW post. And we hope to see that partnership continue to grow with the VFW nationally. Oh, and I should have mentioned before I jump ahead, the slide, the picture you see on this um, right here is actually our agribility workshop. So since the beginning of Heroes to Hives, agribility has been a key player in our and partner in our, in our work. And you can see here, Ned Stoller, he's our agribility counselor up here in Michigan, doing some adaptive technologies for moving hive equipment here. Uh, Ned and I have been working together. First, I was a client of Ned's and now he's working side by side with us to help uh, veterans who are beekeepers understand better accessible technologies to work with their disabilities. Some of the testimonials from our program um, really, I think, speak for itself. Um, a lot of our veterans, uh, when we do our end of the season surveys, will provide um, anecdotal evidence of health outcomes, positive health outcomes from what they're dealing with and how beekeeping is helping them. So some of the things we hear are things like, this allows me to connect with nature. Um, which kind of allows me to slow down those those processes. You know, natural uh, cycles are, are kind of slow and, and require patience. 
It allows us to nurture instead of destroy. I know those of us that are combat MOSs, you know, we were in war zones destroying things. And it's nice to be able to come home and start to nurture something as we repair, um, as we kind of re, uh, reassimilate into civilian culture. It brings us back together as veterans. It offers us stability and support. You've got to check in with your bees. You're accountable to those bees. And that's something I think that a lot of veterans really resonate with is this idea of accountability to somebody, uh, accountability to your unit, account accountability to your battle buddies, accountability to your bees. It also supplements our income. A lot of our students are permanent, 100% uh, permanent unemployable disabled veterans. And so this allows for some supplemental income through honey sales. And it engages our families. I know with a lot of the veterans that we work with, and one of the reasons we allow dependents to participate in the program is that when you're gone on combat deployments, you know, 12 months, 16 months, 18 months at a time, that, that deployment is often stressful on the family unit. And what a better way to re-engage with your family than over something as constructive as bees. And we see that a lot with our students who bring their children into the apiary, that they have really become engaged with that and it becomes an activity the whole family participates in. We do a lot of work with all sorts of organizations around the United States, including the VA, and uh, the VA has been doing a lot of promotion for us in our program over the years. That has really resulted in some record-breaking totals. So previously to 2021, we had about 1,000 veterans that had gone through the program. Currently, we have the largest, one of the large, well, the largest beekeeping training program in the world now. Our 2021 cohort has just under 4,500 students from all around the world participating in it. This is a tenfold increase from our enrollment last year, um, and partially because of our cooperation with the VA has really started to bring a lot of students into our program. I'll also mention that it's also opened other opportunities for work with the VA. And currently um, I'm working with the VA out uh, the, Man the Manchester Hospital in New Hampshire uh, to develop the first of its kind beekeeping therapeutic program to be run through the rec therapy department at the VA. And so that is also something that's come out of this Heroes to Hives work. For individuals that are interested in learning more about Heroes to Hives, our website is heroestohives.com. That's the MSU website. And that is the website where individuals can donate to the program uh, through MSU. You can find our Facebook link and I'll, I'll show you that here in just a moment as well. But also if you have veterans or yourself that are interested in this program, we have an interest form for our 2022 cohort that you can see on that picture. The reason we have that is because we're pretty aware that we are gonna have somewhere around 10,000 applicants for this program this year. And we know that we're not going to be able to take all those individuals just because of the scale of the program and the software that we're dealing with that the program runs on. So if you are interested, please fill out that interest form so you can make sure to get into the 2022 cohort. We also run a Facebook page that's pretty active that you can keep up to date with our uh, programming on. And if you have any questions about the program, you can refer those to myself, Adam at myths.org. Um, I currently work for Michigan Food and Farming Systems and uh, kind of where we're going with the program, just as kind of a preview is that um, the program has, has received some USDA funding that'll be coming in in September, which has allowed us to really expand the program tremendously. And so now Michigan Food and Farming Systems, the organization I work with, uh, will be the individuals that will be coordinating uh, Heroes to Hives program on the national level. So uh, you can reach me at adam at org. And I appreciate the time today. I'll uh, stop my share. Thank you, Adam. That was great. Um, I'm sure that you've got some questions. I do have one question up here. Did you say your program offers college credits that apply towards a college degree program? That's a great question. No, our credits do not apply to a college degree program. The program that I'm referring to, the um, Great Plains Master Beekeeping Program, is not a college course. Um, what it is, is it, so beekeeping is a little bit weird as, a, as, a, as an industry. Most folks do not go to college to become a beekeeper. Um, they go through a channel, which is the master beekeeping courses. And so all across the nation, universities and trade, uh, trade industry associations host these master beekeeping courses, which are formal five-year courses to get a master beekeeping certificate, but they are not transferable for college credit. So the UNL program that individuals can transfer their credits to is a master beekeeping program. It's not a degree program. So they do get a certificate at the end of that but it is not a, a degree holding certificate. 
Okay, if anybody else has any questions, um, I just text the Sigerability, um, thanks you for your response. Um, if anybody else has any questions, type them into the chat box and we will get to them at the end. Thank you, Adam. Uh, we will move on to the Indiana AgVets project. So Ed, if you can go ahead and share your screen and Adam, unshare your screen and I will introduce, introduce uh, Ed. Ed is the outreach coordinator for the National Agribility Project. He's one of my coworkers here. He co-manages the Indiana AgVets program and is responsible for outreach activities and resource development, promoting agribility services to cooperative extension service staff and supporting the programming efforts of the underserved populations outreach and veteran outreach coordinators. Ed also manages calls and inquiries to agri the National Agribility's toll-free hot hotline helpline. So, Ed, take it away. Thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, appreciate the opportunity to talk about our Indiana AgVets program, which the Indiana AgVets program is one of uh, you know, approximately 25 or so uh, USDA, Ag, USDA AgVets programs that are now sprinkled throughout the, throughout the country. Uh, the program has been ongoing for a few years now. We just, we started our project two years ago, uh, first of September of 2019. Uh, so we're about two years into the project. And actually most of this slide set was something I put together back when we first started the project or sometime in late 2019 as we were just getting up and going. And I thought, oh my, with, with all the adventures in the world, how much am I gonna have to change? And fortunately, as I go back through the, went back through these, we're pretty well still on track with what we wanted to do, um, but it has been like everybody else. We experienced some challenges with challenges with COVID, so I'll talk about those in a minute. But uh, we're still pretty well on track with what we what we originally set out to do. Um, the uh, AgVets project is actually led by Hoosier Uplands Economic Development Corporation, which is a nonprofit community service organization in southern Indiana serves several counties down in our in the far southern part of the state. Um, they've worked with Indiana Agribility on for years and have partnered up or actually offered to have us partner on this project as they are the lead organization. Um, again, I'm with Purdue. Uh, I work out of the Indiana Agri Indiana Agribility and National Agribility office. Um, we also have partnered with uh, Washington State University who assists with our, with our um, evaluation of this project. So, but the primary collaborators are Hoosier Uplands and, and Indiana Agribility. Come on. There we go. Um, the goals for our project and really any of the 25 or so AgVets programs around the country are really twofold. Um, USDA put this program not only put this program together to not only support veterans in their career efforts, but also support agriculture. Um, as part of this program, we were charged or as part of this grant effort, we were charged with preparing military veterans for successful, meaning, meaningful careers in agriculture, whether that's agriculture production, uh, agribusiness, educational support. Uh, we're looking at the big picture agriculture, not just farm production. Um, and at the same time, we want to support agriculture. Uh, it's no secret that labor is a major issue for any agricultural enterprise probably more so now than it was a couple of years ago when we put this, put this project together. Um, so USDA and those that put together, designed this program at the federal level saw it as a great opportunity to bring good people into agriculture. Uh, a lot of veterans come from rural areas, uh, disproportionate 
number of veterans come from rural areas and return to those rural areas after they've done their after they've served their country. Lots of different types of agricultural opportunities out in those rural areas that maybe maybe they didn't weren't aware of before they before they served, but their military experiences made made veterans of make make veterans a very logical choice for agricultural careers. And so again, we're just two sides of the same coin. We want to support veterans, but at the same time support the agricultural industry. Uh, our particular project uh, is primarily aimed at Indiana and the surrounding states. Uh, we would, as the projects evolved, we could probably take somebody, work with somebody from a little farther out as we've changed a few things along the way. But uh, generally, Indiana and the surrounding states, uh, we are targeting any veteran um, or or National Guard, uh, current reserves. We do have a couple active duty or two or three active duty folks that are still on active duty that are participating in the program. So if you've served or are serving, we certainly would like to work with you. If you have any, any interest at all in, in pursuing some type of career in agriculture, uh, we wanna note that even though we as AgriAbility work with farmers with disabilities, you don't have to have a disability to participate in this project. Um, however, if there is a disability situation, that's what we do. We'll work with the, the individual to help them address whatever challenges are presented by a disability in, in moving forward. We have basically a threefold approach to this project. First of all, it's a very personalized program. We're not gonna have huge numbers. Uh, we hope to have 60 to 70 folks go through the, at least some of the program over the course of the project. Um, if we have more, that's, that's great. But we try to do a very personalized, um, personalized program directed exactly toward that individual's needs. Uh, so there is a lot of, a lot of individual attention, uh, personal coaching, personal mentoring. Um, I already mentioned the disability support if that's needed. Uh, training and agriculture and vocational training. Uh, we try to match our ag vets with trainings and educational opportunities that meet their career, career interest. Uh, we have folks from with a huge wide range of career goals, career interests, needs. And so we try to individualize the program. It's, uh, so that involves, again, a lot of personal time, personal, personal mentoring, uh, talking and learning what, what each individual is interested in and then finding the appropriate educational opportunities for those individuals. And finally, I guess the capstone would be an internship experience that where the ag vet is actually able to go out and gain some hands-on experience in either a, a farm or an agricultural business to learn more and get uh, to learn more about that particular occupation, that particular job. And so to give them a clear view of moving forward, if that is something that they really want to pursue. Come on. There we go. Um, just glance through this slide. I already mentioned the mentoring and job coaching. Again, want to emphasize we have a very individualized program. Nobody's going to have the same, nobody's going to go through with the same curriculum. Um, makes it interesting, does make it kind of a challenge. I mean, we have to, we work with every individual. Um, the internship host, when that individual is placed in an internship, that host becomes a vital member of the team. There's no cost for the insur or internship or no cost to the to the host, but we do we do ask them to take a, an active role in supporting, providing a great educational experience and a great work experience while while those individuals are 
at their in internship. Okay, some of the training that we we offer. Um, as I said, everybody has an individualized training. Uh, we do have a little bit, a, a few items that we like. We try to get all of our participants to uh, to at least complete. Um, and this is one of those areas that's changed a little bit since COVID. Um, we really wanted to do some focus on one-on-one -on -one training and or small group training. COVID obviously threw a curveball at that. Uh, so we have, to some extent, moved us to at least a partial online model. Uh, we want each we want each ag vet to go through some type of ag or some ag safety and health training uh, that was originally going to be offered by by agribility or our staff we work with the ag safety and health we're part of the ag safety and health program at purdue university seemed logical that's something well we'll treat that ourselves then we get told we're, well, we're not gonna we, we can't have in-person programming so we partnered up with a online learning management platform uh, called Good Days Work. Uh, to, and this was very early on about March of 2020 as we were just getting up and going and realized that we were gonna have to make some major changes, partnered up with uh, Good Days Work to offer our safety and health training online. Uh, and that's turned out to be a great, a great partnership. They off, offer a learning management platform that we can help that we keep track track of not just online trainings but other other programs that are that our agvets have completed. Um, we have a we've had a series of workshops over the past year with in cooperation with the Indiana Farmer Veteran Coalition uh, chapter that we try and we encourage all of our current agvets to to attend and it's also turned into a very good a very good recruiting tool for our program these we move around the state we've done i believe five since october we have another one in a couple of weeks um, trying to visit every corner of the state and maintain and we'd like to keep these going as we move along but each one we at each one of these workshops they're all different but we do have a similar theme and we introduce agribility the farmer veteran coalition try to make participants aware of services available to veterans, whether it's through USDA, Department of Defense, uh, other organizations, uh, usually some type of a agricultural education involved, whether it's we've had speakers on beekeeping and goats and soil health and a variety of other topics, um, depending on the location of facility tours, facility tours or farm tours. Uh, those have proven to be very successful. Again, not only as an educational tool, but a recruiting tool for our AgBets program. And also a great, great for networking. Uh, we've got folks that actually surprise me how far they will travel, even though we're trying to visit other corners of their, all the corners of the state. We have folks that'll drive several hours just to spend the day with, with their counterparts. And that, that's great. Uh, we like to we we partnered up with another organization within the Purdue Pesticide Programs, uh, and we try to get all of our we offer the opportunity for all of our agvets to complete commercial pesticide applicator training. Uh, not so much that we expect everybody to go out and be a commercial pesticide applicator, but it's a great and some great education about environment environmental issues um, and great exposure to some of the staff that put those programs on. They've been very supportive and have actually offered to, they, they've offered that service for free for us and we're taking advantage of that. Other programs, uh, other trainings, what we, I guess, call supplemental trainings that our ag vets go through, wide range of things. I don't, I know we've got at least two or three veterans of Heroes to Hive I, that have already been through the program before they joined up with our ag vets program. I don't know if we've had, anybody go through since, but that's always, there's definitely some interest in that. Um, but 
our goal here is not to re we don't want to reinvent or invent trainings uh there are a massive number of programs through extension through in our state and all the other states as well uh industry sponsored programs that are perfectly appropriate most of the time the issue or the challenge is identifying those programs and connecting our ag vets with that particular with that particular opportunity and we've had folks attend lots of different things of the 30 plus that are are active in the program at the moment um, and we yeah there again it's totally interest of the ag vets so we try to make it feasible to to get those folks connected with those particular particular opportunities in most cases the grant funds that we operate under are able to cover the cover the full stipend or full cost of the instructional fees um, we can't put somebody through a semester at a a college but we can certainly pay for a short course and or some type of a pro or program that may cost a few hundred dollars that might be cost prohibitive if that individual didn't have the support and so that's been a very appreciated by our by our folks and i think it will continue to be uh, the internships programs um, I mentioned earlier there's no cost to the host we do pay a stipend to the interns they don't get rich but it certainly at least pays for expenses and gas money um, we have individuals placed at various types of farms whether it's i would say can traditional or conventional farms or specialty type operations ranging from fruit and vegetable to hemp, uh, agribusinesses, uh, machinery dealers. Again, we're looking at the, the big picture of agriculture. I don't know as we've had anybody placed in, I guess what I call it the green industry yet, but if there's an interest, we'll certainly work with them on that. We have industry support from, from that industry as well. Uh, we have a partnership with the Purdue University Research Farms, which Purdue has about a dozen farms spread throughout our throughout the state, and they each have a unique. Each one is unique. They all they all have their own specialty type of operations, whether it's livestock or field crops or forestry, and we try to match up. That's usually our go-to if we can match up an intern with a Purdue farm, we try to do so. Um, had great support from agribusinesses and around the state, as we mentioned, uh, agriculture industry is begging for good, good workers. And so we've had great support and we hope that, look for that to continue. Uh, wrap up real quick here, just this thing wouldn't be possible without the support of a variety of without the, the huge support that we've had, whether it's through uh, veteran service organizations, uh, agribusiness and farm organizations such as Farm Bureau or Farm Bureau or commodity groups. Again, the three main operators are Agribility and Hoosier Uplands and Purdue Extension Service. Uh, great support from Indiana State Government and again, the Purdue Ag Centers as well. So again, it wouldn't be possible without, without the support of those those organizations and agencies. Uh, for more information about the program, um, again, I'm the co-manager of the program. I work. Linda Tarr is the project director from Hoosier Uplands. There's and there is her contact information um, as well as mine. Or for more information about the program or to get our contact information, www.indianaagvets.info should tell you about all you need to know. And if that doesn't help or doesn't tell you what you need to know, don't hesitate to call. That I believe is all I have. I'll be glad to answer any questions and turn it back over to Cindy. Thanks. Thanks, Ed. Um... And there is a question. Uh, where does one view a list of the 25 plus AgVets programs? 
Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Go to, I would, I would just Google for USDA Ag Vets programs and give me a few minutes and I might be able to come up with the link once I'm, well, I'll, once I sign off, I'll, I'll look for the right link and I'll put it in the chat, but you can Google for the AgVets program and there is a list, list on the USDA website. Yeah, I have seen it too. So yeah, if you could put that in the chat box later so people can view that at their, on their own. Uh, someone's asking if they can get a copy of the PowerPoint uh, test. This, this will be available on, uh, on a recording. So I think uh, the copy of the PowerPoint will be on there as well. Any other questions for Ed? I see one okay. from... Okay, okay, one okay it's a direct message um, from, from Dick. You mentioned the Ag Vets, Indian Ag Vets is funded by the USDA, which specific grant funds it? That is the USDA Ag Vets program is the name of the program. And then there's one since 2000, has the number of just over two dozen programs been an increase or a decrease from the 90s? I don't know if you can answer that one or not. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm, this particular program that this, 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 or Ag Vets program, I think, has only been in existence about three years. Yeah, I, I, I think, think you're there right. Was, there was, I think, one cycle before we received our grant, and then there's been a couple since then. So there may have been, I know there's been other programs, but this particular one is only about four years old, that I, as far as I know. Yeah, I think you're correct. Okay, we, there's one that says that Kentucky just started an Ag, Ag Vets program this year. Enhancing agricultural opportunities, military veterans, Ag Vets is the uh, USDA Ag Vets program. And there's the link there in the Thank chat. Thank you, box. Richard. That's, yep, that's, I shortened it a little too much. I just called it the Ag Vets program, but. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you have any more questions for Ed, you can put them in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end. Uh, right now, we're gonna move on to, if Ed, you can uh, stop sharing your screen and Joni, you'll be next and you can share your screen and I'll introduce Joni. Uh, Joni Harper, uh, this is the Heroes to Hives of Missouri, she's gonna discuss. Joni is a County Engagement Specialist in Agricultural and Environment with Missouri Extension. She got her BSA and MS from the University of Arkansas, majoring in Crop Soil and Environmental Sciences. She has been involved in a number of projects, including Beginning Farmers and Ranchers Program, Missouri Agribility, Farmer and Rancher Stress Management, Beekeeping workshops with the focus to increase beekeeping and honey production in Missouri and educational agricultural outreach for underserved populations. Okay, Joni, you have it. All right, thank you. Uh, can everybody see my screen? I'm still trying to work out making sure I have two screens going and sometimes I get confused. So if you can't see it, just holler at me and let me know. I think so, it's working fine. Okay, okay great. So Adam talked about the Heroes of Hives program uh, nationally on there. Um, two years ago, Karen Funkenbush, who's the Missouri um, Agribility Coordinator here, and I went up and um, listened to Adam talk about here, his Heroes to Hives um, that Michigan State was doing. I wouldn't say we begged, but maybe nagged a little bit <laughs> with Adam to see if we could get a chapter here in Missouri. Missouri has over 442,000 um, veterans and we have two bases. So we have quite a good uh, number of vet veterans in Missouri and we have several, we're number two outside of Texas, I believe when it comes to small farms. So we do have a history of working with veterans and also with the small farming side of things. 
So 2001, um, this year was kind of our pilot year. Um, and Adam did kind of talk about how that went on and I'll kind of reiterate to cut what Missouri's doing here. So we did have a pilot year this year. We had 290 veterans and their dependents that signed up for the program. University of Missouri Extension, this is considered a program here. We, when we part and we're the chapter, it's free to everybody. But in Missouri, we are, we say that we're the first state chapter of the National Heroes of the Hives program. I'm trying to support the financial and personal well-being of military veterans community. Let's see, I did a vid, we did a quick video. Johnny, if you're, if there's, uh, if there's sound, you need to share your sound. We're not hearing anything, so I don't know if there's sound or not on the video. It's just music. Okay, so that was just kind of a little introduction video that we put together for our state fair that was kind of running on a loop um, that talks about what we've been doing and advertising for the Heroes to Hives program. And sorry if the, it, all the music, there was just music in the background, so you just missed out on maybe jamming out to a little um, old time rock and roll, I think is what the background music was there on there. But Missouri participants, they do enroll with the Here's the Highs program with Michigan State University. This is their national program. And then in Missouri, we supplement the MSU curriculum with curriculum specific to Missouri. We do a hands-on training that takes place at an apiary in Missouri. And the apiary that it, we have there, we partner with the Central or University of Central Missouri. They have an old, a small farm that's kind of right in the middle of Warrensburg, Missouri. There's also an Air Force base that's very, very close. So University of Central Missouri has quite a strong um, active program working with veterans um, and active military. So if you kind of notice, this is a lot of partnerships. And they've been working out really nice. Everybody's been very supportive of this programming. Actually, University of Central Missouri built us an outdoor classroom for this program. And they've been very helpful in trying and helping us make sure that it is also accept apiary is accessible to individuals that um, need access to the apiary. So when we do the hands-on workshop, we call, I call, we call them field days. They range from April, they go from April to October. We normally do two field days every month, a weekday or a Saturday. We have morning and afternoon sessions. And then in between our morning and afternoon sessions, we have optional activities. One activity was doing a storm trap, but we also really try to focus on the mental health and well-being also. 
Um, that's why we brought in the at ease program. It's mindfulness and coping with stress and building relationships or rebuilding relationships. We're doing Tai Chi in the apiary um, next month. So that's going to be our September one. And then we also, we had honey harvest here in Missouri and that was July. And we really did adaptive equipment when it comes to honey harvest. We have quite a few of our um, our vets that have back injuries or some limited mobility and lifting these hives can be quite hard. Um, so we have different equipment that was available for them to use and to see how that might suit them. So one thing that we really are gonna focus on, um, Adam was talking about the Here's the Hive programs and how COVID has really kind of shut down or it had really hindered the on-ground activities here in Missouri. We actually, this year, we have been having those. We have spaced them out. So we didn't have so many um, people who was all together it is outdoors. We have been doing this program this year. Some things we're looking at in the future and what we have been trying to implement is we are doing accessible beekeeping. We really wanna focus on making these, we have the traditional um, hives, but also we're doing more of the accessible beekeeping when it comes to the horizontal hive. If you see down the bottom picture, that yellow long hive is a horizontal hive. <clears throat> we had uh, several of our, our veterans interested in the horizontal hive when it comes to, they can just work the frames. It's stationary there and it's easier. They don't have to lift a bunch of weight. They can just use one for, move one frame at a time. We've ordered and we're gonna start next spring using the Aja hives or the AZ hives, Sublinian hives. If you, they're more stationary. They're the ones in the corner up there, the three frames. Those are going to, we're going to see how they work here in Missouri, let the students use them. Um, I, these should really help when it comes to the mobility, any limited uh, mobility, any injury, some, and helping with some of the disabilities when they don't, these are stationary also, or you can put them on a, um, in the back of a truck, you can move them around. But what's nice about those is they open up in the back, if you see the picture, and they pull frames out. So there's not as heavy lifting. You can build the structure where if somebody um, is using a wheelchair, it's really at the level that they can um, still continue beekeeping and working those hives on there. We have an ag engineer who's also um, part of this team when we're looking at different adaptive equipment and we're gonna to continue to be looking at that also and working with our partners and seeing what will work. What's really nice about this program is the veterans who have been participating in it. They have really been engaged. Um, they really, because it is our pilot year, they've really given a lot of good suggestions. We have several who are quite, um, are engineers into themselves and like to design. So we're going to be trying to develop more um, beekeeping to make it more accessible and different equipments that can help with that. We're looking to expand um, through help with a grant. We're looking to expand our apiaries. Right now we only have one and we have several people who are enrolled. They come from all over the state. Some drive several hours to get there. So we're trying to expand our apiaries. So we at least have four or five training apiaries in Missouri. Our team is Travis Harper. He is with Extent University of Missouri Extension. He's kind of our technical. He kind of does the trainings, the on-ground trainings. There's myself. Karen Funkenbush, who is with Missouri Agribility. And then there we have a lot of partners in the state. So the State Beekeeping Association um, has really helped with that. One, also th one thing also is we have a lot of um, human environmental science specialists who come in and help us also with this program. So our funding, 
is partially funded by Missouri Beginning Farmers Grant, Missouri AgriAbility, University of Missouri Extension, the Brain Injury Association. So we have a lot of partners and funding sources that help with this. One also thing is um, in Missouri, we give certificates out to any of the programming that we might do. Here is the highs would be one. And with the partnership with um, the USDA, FSA, and beginning farmer ranchers grants on there, the certificates are kind of seen as credits to years, years um, to get some of that beginning farmer rancher money with F FSA on there. And that's all I really have. And there's some contact information. Thank you, Joni. Um, I have a question. The the apiaries. Yes. Are they are they current operating apiaries that are volunteering their space for you to use, or are you building apiaries in different places? We're building them. So we started the apiary in Warrensburg. Um, in 2020. And then when we expand, the next one is going to go in one of our research centers, but we will be building them. So that comes from the USDA funding as well. Yes. And then we also have other partners. And um, when we brought this program to Missouri, we have a lot of people who are very excited to help support the program. And so um, we also are getting outside funding for helping with that. Okay. All right. Any questions anybody else has for Joni? Okay. I don't see any yet. Um, if you do, please put them at the end. Thank you, Joni. Appreciate it. All right. If you will... Stop sharing your screen and Melissa, will you get uh, ramped up and then share your screen? Um, Patriot Gardens is the next project we're going to discuss and Melissa Stewart is going to be our presenter. She earned her bachelor's in horticulture and in environmental protection from West Virginia University in 1996 got an MS in environmental Sci science at Marshall University in 2009. She's had several positions at West Virginia State University in extension service since 2002. In September of 2017, she took the role she currently holds today with the West Virginia National Guard Military Authority as the director of Patriot Gardens, a program developed to meet the needs of our military service members past and present as they pursue agriculture in retirement or as a supplemental career. So, Melissa? It's you... not letting me share my there screen. Okay. It's, um, can it, I have no uh, ability to share my screen for some reason. Have you clicked the share screen button at the bottom? The Try host again. disabled. <laughs> Try again. I just and made you there we go. Again. Yeah, I don't know what Thank happened. You. Okay. There you are. Okay, can you see it? Yes. I, I apologize because I, I do work for the National Guard and we are in a fortress, so I keep on dropping connectivity. So uh, I think that's what happened. But um, as long as you guys can see everything, I'm going to go. I, I so think you're good. Is, yeah, I think you're good. Okay, thank you. Okay, my name is Melissa Stewart. And um, as she said, I, I oversee the Patriot Gardens program. As you can tell, we're a little bit different from the other presentations you've already seen today in that um, I was within the Extension Service and was blessed to start interacting with our National Guard in West Virginia, which then led to a change of venue for myself. And um, I was hired on by the National Guard in 2017 to lead what we call Patriot Gardens. Uh, if you can see, definitely a play on word on gardens, and I don't think I've ever spelled gardens correctly ever since. Uh, with that said, 
the mindset that was created by our then tag General Hoyer was that our mission as Patriot Gardens was to align our landowners, our operators, experts, resources, infrastructure, everything in our state to facilitate agricultural economic development opportunities for West Virginians, as well as to create employment opportunities for our veterans, our guard members, our our uh, guard family, as well as citizens throughout the state. In order to do this, we had to look outside the guard and uh, with that said, bring in resources in order to make this all come together. Uh, while looking at this population, the guard all Melissa, can you hear me? Started to look at those who are in recovery and trying to transition. Can you hear me? Um, you kind of are fading in and out. I, I hear you now. Okay, I apologize. It's connectivity. I I hear you good now, but okay. Um, so what we have done is we have our uh, multi-year development going on with our different armory resources. So we're able to develop our uh, almost agricultural venues for education. And through this, you can see some of our pictures in, in uh, display alone. You start to see some of the individuals that we're impacting. Go to the next slide. Through our agricultural trainings, as the others had mentioned, the AgVet funding, we also are one of the AgVet projects uh, that are uh, administered through the USDA program. Uh, as part of that, we have developed our agricultural education outreach. We, uh, to date, have reached over 750 veterans and guardsmen uh, in West Virginians that are uh, in recovery, trying to uh, provide agricultural education through hands-on trainings, uh, as well as workforce development opportunities. We work through numerous mindsets, so we're not solely looking at one train of thought. We offer uh, education as it pertains to orchard lawn and landscape, stock production and processing, greenhouse, high tunnel production, nutrient management, fruit and vegetable production, and we're starting down the value added avenues. Uh, to date, we have serve that allows us to do each, though we sit here amongst the uh, we can with the click of a uh, email access roughly 6,500 troops through uh, our listservs, uh, Distro A here within the National Guard. But we also then have our own listserv that, that helps us then for in population. Uh, we've got, we have through our grant opportunities developed 13 grant supported because our veterans are actively now working uh, on our Apple project that I'll speak to in a second. We have three different locations, three different armory locations that we utilize as our main hub. With that, we also have our distance learning labs that will enable us to actually outreach from those armories to the additional 20 five armories that we have uh, under the auspice of the guard. As I spoke earlier, I also mentioned that that we as a guard work with individuals that are transitioning through recovery. Uh, many times that's where we enter 
interact also with our veteran population. There's, there's a lot of crossover programming that's happening. And uh, as a state that's been directly impacted by the opioid addiction, uh, this has worked well to be able to develop the programming to meet the needs of everybody at the same time. Uh, pictures of the interactions we've done there. Uh, we've directly into rehab facilities and retreatment through uh, our interactions with the Jobs and Hope program, which was developed by our governor. It's saying my uh, internet's unstable, so I'm making sure it's working. Hey, Melissa, I, there was a suggestion that if you stop your video, it might uh, help with your bandwidth. We can still hear you though. Try that. Ah. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, let's. We are not hearing you, Melissa. Okay. How about now? Yes. Can you hear me? I you apologize. Now? Okay. I do live in a fortress. Um, as I was talking with the Jobs and Hope, what we have uh, been able to do is then stair step into what we've developed as workforce training opportunities. So we've developed a greenhouse technician, a lawn and landscape technician. We do OSHA 10 courses as well as orchard management. As these are things that have come to light uh, within our state as areas uh, and workforce development. So we're able to then try to better prepare those uh, looking for additional agricultural employment by training them directly based on the employer needs and connecting the dots. Uh, we also have our Mountaineer Challenge Academy, which are cadets that come through a high school based program. We're working directly with them as well. And apprenticeship opportunities in this case, connect the dots for them. So as they get on their chosen path, through our military uh, education program that we can align them and provide them skill sets for employment. What we have is through an AML grant, so abandoned mine lands grant, through uh, DEP and OSM, we have developed a uh, uh, Apple project known as our Patriot Apple Project Virginia, which is in the middle of the state. With that said, this project is one that I referred to where we have uh, three veterans of the seven employees on the project that are actively working this post mine use land, bringing it back to agricultural use in conjunction with our partnership with USDA ARS out of Kearneysville, West Virginia. We have a shared employee who leads the project in uh, Doug Rains. And with that said, he brings years of knowledge with him from USDS that helps to direct then how we implement what is, at least in our state, the first uh, apple orchard on post mine use lands and a research facility that allows us to figure out how we can do more. Um, with that said, we have a pilot orchard that's five acres in production currently with um, some of the apples you see here are, uh, apples here later than we have 100,000 plus grafted rootstock uh, on the property currently of that we printed 5,000 to 50 
50,000 of that into 70 acres of orchard production uh, on this facility. We also have beekeeping. We have a master beekeeper who is a uh, part of our staff who manages the, the hives we have currently and the bee yard spread across the acreage. And that being off of that then turns in part to the program sustainability. So uh, not only do we have opportunities for outsourcing of the apples, but also then the honey that's coming off of the hives. And I think we're going to cut our losses there with my technical difficulty. And uh, in this, my tech information is above. And any questions, hopefully I can them via email. Okay, does anybody have any questions uh, on the Patriot Gardens with Melissa? If you do, please put it in the chat. Um, Melissa, I, I heard that you are, are an employee of the uh, West Virginia National Guard. Are the rest of your employees or the rest of your staff, are they also employees of the West Virginia National Guard? Yes, ma'am. We have uh, 13 of us. All of us are grant supported. And um, so we, we pursue uh, grant funding. And luckily, all of us coming from extension backgrounds are well versed in grant writing. So um, the, the goal is to be able to provide these resources to our servicemen and women, especially those that walk in and out of our doors daily. Um, we're in the best place to be able to catch someone as they're trying to even determine their retirement goals. Uh, most of them, of course, after deployment are, are veteran status, even though they're still active in uniform. Do you, are you aware of any other um, National Guard states that have adopted a similar program? No, currently we are the only guard that is uh, approaching it in this manner. Uh, you know, as we all know, they're, they're soulless in uh, getting your hands dirty to say the least. And uh, it was an in innovative approach when General Hoyer uh, brought it to light. And, and our current tag General Crane is uh, pushing us to do even more. So I think it is something that we're going to try to entertain with other guards moving forward. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great program and, and I applaud your, your tag for starting this program several years ago. Okay, um, I don't see any other questions in the chat box. Um, let me start my video. Um, thank you all for participating. Uh, if we have any other questions, we'll try to get those to the people that presented. Um, we, we realize that there are many programs across the country. These are only four of them that uh, address um, agriculture and, and veterans. And we know that there are many others and we might do another webinar in the future that uh, addresses those some, some more as well. So if you have any of those programs that you would like to either present at our national training workshop in March, or we do another webinar that we can include, we would like to do so. So contact me uh, if you're interested in sharing your program. Uh, these were all programs that we had, or projects that we had planned for the NTW that was canceled last year. So that's why we're uh, using those now, but there are many others. And if you have any questions about starting similar programs in your own state or elsewhere, um, please address those with the people involved and or send it to me and I can get it to them. So um, I don't think we have any other questions. So at this time, uh, Tess, thank you all for attending. We appreciate it. Great, thank you. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you to all of our presenters. Um, I did put a link in the chat box for our evaluation. So if you could follow that link and fill out an evaluation on today's session, that would be helpful. Um, 
we are we did record this session so it will be archived on the link that is on the screen on the national agribility website and i can put that link in the chat box also um, as soon as we're done here um, next week is our final session and it is the mobile learning lab oops sorry about that and it's taking resources directly to the farmer and beyond. So again, next week, one o'clock, same link that you used for today for that session. All right. And again, the link is in the chat box for our evaluation. And I will put the link in the chat box where you can find any of our archived sessions. Um, this one will, it'll take a couple of days to get this one, you know, on there, but any of the previous ones will be archived there already. And if there are no more questions, I am going to stop the recording.